Hi everyone, let's talk about the perimeter of an ellipse. When was the last time your teacher assigned you to find the perimeter of an ellipse? Chances are your teacher did not assign you this problem. The reason is the formula involves some calculus. And here's the formula. C equals 4 times the definite integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the square root of a squared times cosine squared theta plus b squared times sine squared theta d theta. In this lesson, we are going to do two things. First, we are going to derive the formula. And second, we are going to look at other formulas that can approximate the perimeter of an ellipse. Now, this first formula here is good enough in order to approximate the perimeter of an ellipse. This is based on the fact that a circle is a special kind of ellipse when the value of a and b are equal. And since we know that the circumference of a circle is given by the formula 2 pi r, then this r can be approximated by the average of a plus b, where a is half the length of the major axis and b is half the length of the minor axis. Now, another formula that we can use in order to approximate the perimeter of an ellipse is this Ramanujan's approximation. c is equal to pi times 3 times the quantity a plus b minus the square root of the quantity 3a plus b times the quantity a plus 3b. And of course, we have this exact formula involving definite integration. So, let's say we have this ellipse with a equals 3 and b equals 2. What is the perimeter of this ellipse? Using now these two approximation formulas, let's compare the results with the result if you use this definite integration formula. Using Desmos graphing calculator, if a equals 3 and b equals 2, then the formula c equals 2 pi times the quantity a plus b over 2 gives us a value of 15.70796. 326. Round it off to 8 decimal places. Now using Ramanujan's approximation, here's the result. 15.86543757 and there is only a difference of 0 0.15. Now the exact value using this calculus formula is 15.86543958. Notice that for the first five decimal digits after the decimal point, the Ramanujan's and the calculus formula gave us the same result. The difference starts on the sixth decimal place. Reflecting on this result, I cannot help but admire the genius of Ramanujan. Now, during the time of Kepler, when he was studying the planetary movement around the sun, this calculus formula was not yet available. So, they were resorting to some approximation. So, in this lesson, let's derive this formula for the perimeter of an ellipse. Let's begin with the standard form of an ellipse. x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. Then let's solve this for y. So we transfer this x squared over a squared to the other side by subtracting x squared over a squared from both sides of the equation. And then let's multiply both sides by b squared. And we arrive at y squared equals b squared times the quantity 1 minus x squared over a squared. Then let's take the square root of both sides to arrive at y equals plus or minus the square root of b squared times the quantity 1 minus x squared over a squared. Let's put this aside and we are going to use this later on. Next, let's remember the formula for the length of an arc given by the formula L is equal to the definite integral from alpha to beta of the square root of 1 plus the derivative of y squared dx. So in here, we need to find y prime or the derivative of this y. And we know that y is equal to this value. So let's put this to the side also. Now, if you look at our ellipse, if you do the definite integration from x equals 0 up to a, what we are finding is the length of the arc only at the first quadrant. So if you want to find the perimeter of the ellipse, we need to multiply this formula by 4 so that we can find the entire perimeter, not just the length of the arc at the first quadrant. With that, we now need to find the value of y prime. So what's the value of y prime? We know that the value of y is equal to this expression, but let's write this in fractional exponent so that we can easily find its derivative. And notice also here that you have the square root of b squared, which is equal to b, and then this expression inside the grouping symbol raised to 1 half. We just take the positive sign because we are just limiting our limit of integration from 0 to a. Here is 0. a is this point here. Definitely, we are only after 
the positive square root of this expression. And then by multiplying it by 4, we'll get the perimeter of the ellipse. So to find now y prime, we are going to use the power rule of differentiation. So b is a constant times the exponent 1 half, we have 1 half b, copy the base, and subtract 1 from the exponent 1 half to get 1 half minus 1, times the derivative of the inside function, applying the chain rule. And the derivative of the inside function is negative 2x over a squared. Then let's simplify this. So y prime becomes, notice that this negative 2 and this denominator 2 will cancel each other out to give us negative x here. So you have negative x here. And then 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. Now we have here a negative exponent. And we can write this entire exponential number at the denominator raised to positive fractional exponent and write that back to radical notation and we arrive at this result. So in the numerator, we have this b and this negative x to get negative bx. And in the denominator, we still have this a squared and we write this as positive fractional exponent, but now in the denominator and we write in radical form. So this is now the value of our y prime Let's go back to the formula that we set aside. This y prime here is equal to this result, so let's do the substitution. We now have this result. All the rest are copied, and we replace y prime by this expression representing the value of y prime. Then we can raise this part here to the second, and so we now arrive at this result. Negative b squared is positive b squared, x squared is x squared. Then a squared squared is a to the fourth. And then square root and this exponent 2 will cancel each other out. So we have 1 minus x squared over a squared. All the rest are copied. You have here a squared in the denominator. We can split this a to the fourth to a squared times a squared and distribute one of the a squareds to arrive at this simplified form. This a squared is retained. The second a squared is distributed to 1, then this second a squared divided by this a squared is cancelled out, so we have minus x squared, all the rest are just copied. Now at this point, we are going to perform trigonometric substitution. So we let x be equal to a times sine theta, then it follows that dx over d theta is equal to a times the derivative of sine theta, which is cosine theta. And writing as dx, we have dx equals a cosine theta d theta. Then for our theta sub 1, we are here at the first quadrant. We start at this angle, which is 0, and stop here, which is pi over 2. With this as our substitutions, let's go back to this formula for c. We now replace all the x's by a sine theta to arrive at this result. So this x squared becomes this expression squared, dx is a cosine theta d theta, and then this x squared here becomes this expression squared. Now, let's simplify this. If we square a and there's an a squared here in the denominator, that a squared would be cancelled out. So for our numerator, we only have b squared times sine squared theta. This a squared and this a squared are cancelled out. Then at the denominator, we square a to get a squared, and we square sine theta to get sine squared theta. All the rest are copied. Next, notice that there is a common factor a squared here which we can factor out. The reason is, after factoring that out, it's clear that 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to another trigonometric function cosine squared theta using the Pythagorean identity. So we now change 1 minus sine squared theta by cosine squared theta. Let's take note also that only this part here is under the radical symbol. This other factor is outside the radical symbol. What we can do is we can rewrite this second factor as another radical. Notice that the square root of a squared cosine squared theta is just the same as a cosine theta, and then d theta is outside the radical symbol. Since we now have here two radicals with the same index, then we can multiply these two together, or we can write them as one radical. And notice now that a squared and a squared are the same, so that can be cancelled out. Cosine squared theta and cosine squared theta here are also the same, so we can cancel them out, and the result is now this equation. Notice that this resulting equation is exactly this equation that you would like to prove. So ladies and gentlemen, we have just proven that the formula for the circumference of an ellipse is equal to c equals 4 
times the definite integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the square root of a squared cosine squared theta plus b squared sine squared theta d theta, where a is one half the length of the major axis and b is one half the length of the minor axis. So thank you very much. This is Lando Assistant and we'll see you again in our next video. Bye for now.